Welcome everybody and thank you for getting on in a timely manner. I appreciate that very much. It really helps us. And I'm excited to be with you tonight and share uh, some of the principles of coaching for those of you that uh, might be new and reinforcing for some of you that uh, have already been in the program. So we're delighted that you're here and we're going to jump right into this. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt, <laughs> this always gets tricky for me, to share my screen and uh, we're going to make sure this works. And if it doesn't, I've got a backup here. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand why it's not coming up. Hmm. I had it all set up and it's gone. Okay, Felice, you're my backup. I'm going to make you the host so that uh, you can pull it up. I don't know. I had it set up. I thought one of the things that's not required to be a coach, where is it? Well, so hey, if you hit share, if you hit share, are you, if you hit share screen, hit your desktop, you should be able to get it. I did and it didn't work. Okay, no worries. Yeah. I will do it. You're, you're doing it. All right, guys, I'm going to mute my, myself. You have to be a little technically challenged to be a good coach. <laughs> All right. She's going to pull it up here for us so you can see the slides just to kind of keep us on track. So. Did it work? Yep. There, there, there we go. Possibly. Okay. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk tonight about some of the traits, at least five of the traits of an extraordinary coach and what making, makes coaching so powerful. So we're, again, we're glad that you're on the call and we'll have time for questions and responses toward the end. So Felice, if you want to go to the next slide, that's the problem with this process. Okay, as we get into the traits of extraordinary coaching, we're going to explain what coaching is and what it isn't. Coaching is a very unique niche. Um, let me give you some examples. I'm a, I'm a trained therapist. I'm a trained psychotherapist. I'm also a trained coach. Um, coaching is always about looking forward. Counseling is generally about looking backwards. Coaching is different than mentoring. Mentoring is when somebody with some experience comes alongside somebody that is learning the craft or the skill. So that's the mentoring process. The, the counseling process, again, tends to be issue oriented, looking to the past, while coaching is forward looking, searching for the goals that someone has. So coaching is designed for the purpose of helping people get from where they are to where they want to go. Now, mentoring is a, is a valid uh, practice, a valid science. Uh, taking somebody under your wing and teaching them what you know about a particular field of, of work or skill set, uh, career. Uh, teaching is another thing. Teaching is, in, uh, is about 
teaching people skill sets, things that they don't know. So coaching in itself is very unique. We're not so interested in what happened to people in the past as we are to see where they're wanting to go. And I'll unpack a little more of that as we go through this. So let's go to the next slide. So it's very interesting. I've been training coaches now for maybe eight, nine years. Um, it happened when one of our uh, people that was I was working with at the time, Paula Taylor, um, walked into my office one day and she said, uh, Doc, I want you to teach me to be a life coach. And my response was, as soon as I figure out what that is, I will. Uh, life coaching at that particular time was very, very new. Uh, it actually started coming into mainstream uh, late, mid-90s, uh, maybe a little bit early 90s, but at least mid-90s, that it started becoming more mainstream. Coaching has always been around, but it has been primarily to uh, executives, uh, people in higher uh, profile, high earning categories, and was very, very expensive. And so in the 90s, it started becoming more mainstream. But it was, it, at first, it was kind of a joke. People uh, didn't take it seriously. So back then, when I was training coaches, I would tell them not to identify themselves as a life coach because the, the problem is everybody was hanging out a shingle to be a life coach. But why, why is it so popular now? Well, the primary reason is, is because in our culture, we have, we have a breakdown of the nuclear family and the way that people were nurtured and the way that they were coached by family, friends, close people around them. And we have a very fragmented society now where people don't have those connections that they one time had. So coaching started filling a gap and coaching took away the stigma of going to counseling or going to therapy. And people were very comfortable to say, I, I'm meeting with my coach today. And uh, so now it's, what, it's reached what we call critical mass. Critical mass simply means people have come to understand on a broad spectrum what coaching is. So this is why that it has risen to such uh, popularity in our culture is because it is filling that gap and helping people to get a handle on where they're wanting to go rather than having to go to a psychiatrist, a psychologist, counselor, or therapist. So it's taken away some of that stigma and because it is different, um, it, it is more attractive to a lot of people. Now, I've been through now, I used to say three coach trainings. I just took another one recently. Uh, so now I've been through four different coach trainings. So I'm certified by four different people. Interestingly enough, two of those people are psychiatrists who have turned to the coaching model. My mentor, Dr. David Kruger, who I spent a lot of time with in terms of training and uh, material, reading his material, even uh, being able to co-brand some of my material with his, uh, was my mentor. He was a psychiatrist for 25 years, left the psychiatric field, got into coaching, and uh, then developed his, his uh, own model for coaching. And uh, it's called the Neuroscience of Change, which uh, we implement into our program as advanced coaching. Uh, which goes beyond the level of, of what we're talking about tonight. So this is why coaching has become so powerful. The other two people that I went through training with was uh, uh, people that had the same degree that I do, uh, marriage, family, and child therapist, who turned to coaching, developed models of coaching, and, and I've been certified in all of those. And I bring pieces of that 
into our coaching process. Not only that, most of you know, many of you know me, I, I have a long background in pastoral ministry. I actually have a master's degree in pastoral counseling, uh, a degree in pastoral psychology. Um, so I bring a lot of biblical aspects. Now, here's my position with that. And if, if you're very religious, this is going to turn you off. But life impact is not, we're not evangelizing. We're not trying to get people um, into Christianity. Uh, that's, that's not our goal here. We're training coaches. But I do bring a lot of biblical-based principles that are born out in scripture. Here's my position on that. I don't believe science validates the Bible. I believe the Bible validates the science. So when I bring prin biblical principles in, I want to separate this a little bit. I'm not bringing in church prin principles. I'm bringing in biblical principles. So that's my position on that and make no apologies for that. That's just who I am. And that's what I bring to the table. So uh, that being said, I bring a lot of different dimensions uh, to the coach training that we do. So let's go to the next slide. Thank you, Felicia. Why coaching works. <clears throat> Again, this is a very unique um, niche and a very skilled set niche. And learning the skills and the principles and best practices of coaching, and that's what we teach in our coaching process. Coaching works because we help clients discover their own answers. Interesting, some interesting stats. Do you know that 50% of the people that go to the doctor, medical doctor, and get a prescription, 50% of them never get the prescription filled. Another 25% of those don't take the prescription as it was directed. So very few people really benefit from being told what to do. <laughs> maybe you've had that experience of trying to tell somebody what to do people generally are resistant to being told what to do even though it's in their best interest in coaching we're not in the business of telling people what to do we're in the business of helping remove the roadblocks and we do that through the principles of coaching to remove the roadblocks so they can find their own answers. When people discover their own answers, there's an 80% likelihood. Sometimes it, the percentage even goes higher than that, but I'm being conservative. There's an 80% chance they're going to follow through. There's about a 20% chance they're going to follow through on just being told what to do. Somebody not to, in one of our uh, sessions like this uh, told me, he said, I want to be a coach so I can tell people what to do. I said, well, you're in the wrong place. You need to be an attorney, not, an, a, co not a coach, because attorneys tell us what to do. <laughs> but coaches help people discover what's inside of them. Now, here's what we believe, and I... I there's plenty of belief for the plenty of evidence of this for the most part all of the answers that we need to live a successful life are inside of us some exceptions to that might be some skills that we need to learn one of the niches that i work in is parenting is coaching parents and sometimes i have to teach people some parenting skills but for the most part, when we have a goal, the answer how to reach that goal is inside of us. It's buried. 
It's buried under a lot of limiting beliefs. It's buried under a lot of self-doubt. It's buried under a lot of uh, beliefs that uh, are erroneous or behaviors that have become a pattern for us. The coaching helps uncover that and helps people move toward their goals. When people move forward, oftentimes the experiences of the past lose hold on them. But one of the things that we know in coaching is that people have to have a new story before they can leave their old story. So when people discover a new story and they start moving in that direction, it changes their life. And there's nothing more satisfying to a coach than seeing that transformational moment when people move from that place of being stuck in the present or still tied to their past and start moving forward. Now, there are times that people do need to see a therapist. One of the things that we teach in our process is how to recognize when people need to be referred to a therapist or counselor. So those are things that we help you with and guide you through. All right, thank you, please. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So let's get into the traits. To become an extraordinary coach, it's essential that we have a genuinely desire to help other people succeed. Now, here's one of the secrets to being an effective coach. You have to help your client define their definition of success. We have to be careful that we're not operating out of our definition of success. If we're operating out of our definition of success, we hijack this, the session, we hijack the client. Because now we're trying to direct them to our definition of success. So to help people succeed, they have to be able to identify, describe what success is going to look like. So one of the first things that I ask people in what we call an enrollment conversation, which we will teach you, is where do you want to go and how are we going to know when you get there? Now, what you'll learn is the more defined the definition of success helps define the goal, which makes the coaching process very, very easy. A whole lot easier than a therapist. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I, still, I still do some therapy but I would far rather do coaching. So we have to help people succeed. And as a coach, we can't be tied to our definition of success. We have to be invested in the client's definition of success. It might go against what we believe, what we want. And we will help you through the coaching process to know when you probably shouldn't be coaching somebody, if it's totally in violation of your values, what their goal is, then you shouldn't be coaching them. Don't even try to fake it. And, but, but we'll help you make those kind of discriminations. All right, our discernments. Number, let's go to the next one. Committed to your own personal growth. Now, a coach has to be a life long learner. Now, I've been doing this a long time. I, I'm still a lifelong learner. I just took a couple of weeks ago, finished up another coach training um, with um, I forgot <laughs> I forgot his name. Uh, it'll come Dr. back. Dr. Ayman, Ayman, Ayman. Yes, Dr. Ayman. Thank you, Lisa. Dr. Ayman out of Costa Mesa, uh, 
California. He's a psychiatrist and um, he offered a coach training on coaching for a healthy brain. So I took that course, learned a lot from it. So I'm constantly investing in what I invest in, then I impart to, to the coaches that are a part of life impact. Uh, Felicia, I'd like for you to share a little bit. Felicia has been with me from the very beginning of this process. Uh, Felicia, share a little bit of your personal growth process. Good evening, everybody. My name is Felicia. I'm part of the Life Impact team. Um, <clears throat> we also have Mark Action Jackson on the call. He is part of the team. I told him I was going to call him that. <laughs> but what better nickname for a coach? Jeez. Yes. <laughs> um, so number two, committed to your own personal growth. Now, this should go without saying for a coach, but you'd be surprised how many coaches are out there and we're not trying to say anything about other coaches, but we've been in rooms with extremely successful coaches and in coach trainings where it was evident that the coaches that were there were coaches that were looking to fix something in themselves. Um, and so just how you've heard us probably say, if you haven't, you're about to hear it again, is that, you know, if you don't, work on the things in your life. If you don't heal the areas of your life, you will walk people into your own issues, your own limitations, your own mm. feelings. And so that is why being committed to your own personal growth, your own um, development process is crucial. That's why it is mandatory for our transformational coach certification. We've had people, psychiatrists, PhDs, some of them might be on the call right now, and they know this is that we don't care what your schooling was. You have to go through the first six weeks. Um, and that is what makes our, you know, coaching certification different from others. But there's a couple reasons why. Not only leading others into your own issues, but as coaches, everything we read, everything we're learning, our hunger for personal growth is we share that with our clients. You can't help but to be like, oh, you know what? I just learned this. Or, you know, when it is applicable, it's just any tool. Once it comes up in the coaching session, like Doc said, the coaching session is that individual session. So we're not going in, into it with the mindset of like, I can't wait to share what I learned in this book with this guy. <laughs> it's, the co it's their session. But when the timing's right and you're like, you know what? Let me share this tool. Let me share what I just learned in my own process. Number two, why it's a great reason of why this is an attribute of extraordinary coaches, remember, not just coaches, extraordinary coaches. Reason why when you're, you're, you are committed to your own personal growth and development is that you then can empathize. You know what your client is going through because guess what? Growing and being challenged, it is uncomfortable. So if you don't know that, you know, if you don't personally go through that and you have a client, you can be a little rough around the edges. You know what I mean? Like it helps to be able to understand what they are going through. I'll never forget. I had a small business. I still have a small business now. I have multiple small businesses, but um, me and my friend had a boutique and we decided to take a small business class on Saturdays for two months. And so we took a small business class and this guy, I'm not going to say his name out loud. He's at Phoenix college, but he was teaching us and I remember like having this disconnect and with feeling like what he was sharing. And so I just asked, I said, so when you implement that, when you implemented that with your small business, how did that work out for you? Because I'm having a hard time fathoming that. And the guy said, oh, I've never owned a small a business. I'm like, how is this guy teaching small business? <laughs> and he's never owned a small business. You know what I mean? So as being coaches, it's really important for us to understand what the growth process is like, because then that makes us just much more of an effective coach to be there, to be the cheerleader for our clients or anybody that we're working with. So. Very good. Yeah. Donnie's on the call with us. He just posted on the chat that, um, and Donnie's part of a large group of entrepreneurs and was just, he said he was just recently told, if your coach doesn't have a coach, you don't have a coach. So thanks, Donnie, for that, uh, that feedback, because that is a very, very true statement. 
it, and one of the things that we provide to all of our coaches uh, is they all have access to me. And if they run into a problem, if they run up against something that they don't know how to handle, need some help with, then they can reach out to me. And uh, we don't have any extra charge for that. That's just part of being part of the Life Impact team. So, um, Mark, I know you're on here. I don't see you on my screen. Uh, talk a little bit about your personal growth. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, hey, everybody. Um, uh, Felicia texted me the other day and called me Action Jackson. I hadn't been called that since high school. That was my <laughs> nickname back then. Uh, and she said she was going to do it on this call, but I forgot. So I just busted out laughing when I heard my old nickname. I just wish I was as skinny as I was when they used to call me that. So, <laughs> um, you know, I got into this, um, the coaching model when I fell into helping people coming out of incarceration, uh, find employment, prepare for employment. And I did this because I just wanted better tools. I'm a natural encourager. It's kind of my nature to be encouraging or to, to really be helpful to people. But I wanted better tools to help people. And I, of course, being part of Church for the Nations and being exposed to Doc's leadership, uh, I decided to become a coach. Little did I know how much I needed it for me and uh, my growth was of course like all like all the requirements those first six weeks. Um, I'm sure there may be a mention of this at some point, but those first six weeks are are essential. Uh, so so I I thought I was just going to get better tools to help people with a skill set I didn't have, uh, but I, I didn't realize how much I was going to be helping myself with a skill set I didn't have, and so um, that. I, I get asked about my coaching a lot. And it's hard for me sometimes to describe which part of it is my favorite. But I usually end up landing with this, that my favorite is that they wouldn't train us a thing about coaching another until we spent six weeks on ourselves. And, uh, and so it helped me to see, just in full transparency, being a natural performer, a natural charismatic kind of guy. It helped me to see how much I was living my life performance-based and um, how much I, I was tied to things based on the recognition. I even stood on the stage at Church for the Nations and when Holy Spirit told me it was time to step down, I rebuked the devil <laughs> because I thought, who, how will I be known here? How would people know me? If I'm not on this stage screaming into a microphone, worshiping God, it's really, really funny how we can spiritualize things when there's still a, a selfish motive <laughs> in, involved. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't fathom stepping down from the worship team and just blending into the crowd, quote unquote. And so from unlocking the unhealthy side of performance-driven life, the unhealthy aspects of my natural personality, I was able to embrace the healthy aspects of it and get rid of the ones that didn't serve me anymore, that were actually getting in the way of my growth. And so uh, I was actually in Impact Shift and I was too busy to be part of the extracurricular things with the upcoming Easter program. And so I sat and watched that Easter service mostly glad and enjoying the people who got to experience it because I'd stepped aside. Um, quite honestly, a, a little bit envious because I always enjoyed those extra songs and the extra music. Uh, but it was very refreshing for me. And it was a natural progression because the next Sunday I was getting ready for the worship team and Holy Spirit said, this is your last Sunday, you are done. And instead of rebuking the devil, or wondering where would my identity come from if I'm done, I actually just smiled and said, yeah, I'm done. And I stepped down and literally like four days later, I hadn't even told anybody, four days later, I was approached with an open door that led me into pastoring my own church, 
moving back here to the Midwest and all the other things that have happened. So um, the, the main thing is just that that journey of self-discovery set me free from what I thought were instruments of my identity that turned out to just be interest, instruments of my captivity. They were keeping me stuck. Um, that's been, I don't know how many years ago, but I'm glad I'm not still addicted to being a worship leader because at my age with all this gray hair in my beard and uh, I'd be out of breath during the first song. So I'm just grateful that I got delivered from that. <laughs> but ultimately that self-discovery, uh, and I'll say this and stop, it goes back to seven years old and experiences that I had I'd already been in a healing process, but these were like the final steps of understanding um, how things in my early childhood had um, affected me and getting that raised awareness and that additional knowledge of self, it really has ruined me for the good. Um, I'm still charismatic. I'm still a natural performer. But I live my life and I do these things from who I am, not for who I am. I coach from who I am. I don't coach for who I am. I serve and I do all these things from, and uh, it's just from a great place of, of wholeness, a great place of healing and growth. And it's just exciting to be a part of helping people get there in their lives as a coach as well. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Mark. Um, the, um, the process is so powerful uh, for all of us. Mark is one of our trainers. He will be on the training. Uh, if you choose to go through the, uh, the coaching process, Felicia is one of our trainers. Um, like I said, uh, Felicia's been with me from the very beginning and uh, knows this stuff inside and out. Has traveled with me to various parts of, of the world uh, in training and teaching. Um, so we've trained coaches in Puerto Rico. We've trained coaches in Romania. We have trained coaches in um, Haiti. Uh, so, and we have trained coaches uh, in, in many different aspects, all kinds of different venues. And Mark has a broad uh, experience in, in various areas of coaching. So you'll gain a lot of information from him. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, the, the, the part of authenticity. I told you that I had gone through four different coach training processes. It's interesting that in all but one of those, I was not required to have any prerequisites. All I was required to do is put my money down. And I can assure you the money I put down was far more than what we charge here at Life Impact. Um, I've invested a lot of money in getting trained, but Felicia and Mark both have referred to that first six weeks. That first six weeks is a, a grounding for you to really get some, some, a handle on who you are and what the process is inside of you. And I just refuse to train coaches that have not gone through this process. Um, I made one mistake uh, in letting somebody get into our program that did not go through this six weeks. And that person, it becomes very evident that that person did not go through the process. So I made a commitment to myself at that time that we would not train anybody that did not go through this process. Now, does six weeks give you that total authenticity? No, it is the groundwork. 
when you go through this coach training with us, you're being coached through the whole uh, process. So this is what authenticity is. It's being what we call a product of the product. When you become a product of who we are and what we do and teach, then you have an authenticity. Your authenticity is not based on the certification of an accrediting agency. Let me just speak to this real quick. Here's, here's one of the, there's, there's two challenges with coaching. There's good news and bad news. The good news is there's no government oversight for coaching. The bad news is there's no government oversight for coaching. Anybody can hang out a shingle and call themselves a coach. I know people that's taken leadership courses with some great leaders. I know some of these people personally. They're great leaders, but they've taken their leadership process and called it coaching because coaching is so popular. Leadership and coaching are two different things. You can't take a leadership model and turn it into a coaching and have authenticity. So going through this process uh, gives you that, that authenticity. And it comes through to your clients, people that you work with. The other thing, let me just say real quick, there's coaching, uh, the Coaching Federation International, I think it's called. They, are, they have positioned themselves. This is a large organization. They have positioned themselves that if there is ever any government oversight, they want to be the entity that the government would recognize. But their certification is not any better at this point than anybody else's. Uh, your certification is as good as the training that you receive. Now, what we've done here in Life Impact, I've taken a lot of the theory out. I deal with principles, skills, and best practices. Other coaching processes get into a lot of theory. I can go into theory, but one of the things that I've endeavored to do was to give you the meat of this and not charge you for the fluff because the theory is a lot of fluff. It makes the process longer and consequently people can charge more. So I really work hard to give you every bit of all the principles, skills, best practices, knowing the, the boundaries, and we'll get into that, so that you can be an effective coach. Now, if you want to know all the theory of it, I'll tell you where to go to get it. I can give you that information. Uh, I'm just not going to get bogged down into it with this process. Okay, let's go to number four. Creating the space for empowerment. This is a crucial thing that we do in the coaching process. Now, what do we mean by creating the space for empowerment? People misuse this word all the time. We're going to empower you. You can't empower anybody. Okay? Empowerment comes from inside. It's internal. What we want to do in our skill set as coaches is create the space where the client can empower themselves. If I empower you, you're dependent on me. And it's not really empowerment. We use that term, but it's not really empowerment. If I help somebody, and this again is one of those magical moments when people find their own strength, they find their own insight. They find their own power. 
that is a transformational moment. And let me just tell you as a coach, it's addictive. <laughs> when we see that happen, it, it really, it really impacts us as a coach. Okay, let's go to number five. Boundaries, the coaching process happens within an intentional session. Here's what we mean by boundaries. Coaching is different than just sitting down with a friend. Coaching is different than having a conversation in the parking lot, in the foyer, wherever you might be. Coaching has to have a beginning. The process has to have a beginning. It has to have a middle and it has to have an end. Now, a lot of people get caught up in just having a great conversation. Coaches in the beginning, that's one of the things that we have to help them with, is setting these boundaries. If your conversation is going more than 45 minutes to an hour, then you, you're violating boundaries that's going to be effective. Generally speaking, what happens when you go beyond those boundaries, you're just rehashing stuff and you're not bringing any decision-making process to the, the session. So we teach you how to set boundaries. Now, generally we think of coaching as being 45 minutes to an hour, 50 minutes, something in that area. But I have coaching sessions that last 15 minutes. I have some of them that last 30 minutes because what we're after is result, not time. So here's what you will learn. You don't get paid for the time that you're in the session. You get paid for what you bring to the session. I had a three minute conversation. Well, maybe four short conversation in a training that I was doing the other night. Uh, and it was a relationship uh, training that I was doing for a group. And um, during the break, I had a young lady come up to me and started talking to me about her relationship. She was not married. Uh, we invite singles to these relationship trainings. Uh, we want them to learn. And she was very disturbed about some things going on in her relationship. I asked her three questions, three coaching questions. And it changed her life at that moment. So it doesn't, it's not about how long, it's about what you bring to the session. But we want you to have boundaries for your sessions. All right. Uh can I say something about that? I'm, yeah, please. <laughs> I'm chatting with people and doing slides, being <laughs> very uh, multi-talented over here. <laughs> Not so much as I went to the next slide, but with the boundaries, this is just a little bit of a note for people on the call. Even if you're not a coach, don't plan on being a coach, but a lot of you that are on the call are probably people that people go to get advice from, or you mentor, or you lead. And if you are walking away from those conversations, tired, drained, or exhausted, bring boundaries into it. Because what happens is so many times people want to talk to you about things, yet they are not ready or have any intentions of putting in the work to, for change. So that is what makes a coaching decision different because a lot of times, I mean, when you have a paid client, I mean, obviously they're committed to the process or at least a little bit more so, but having those boundaries, having like, Hey, you want to talk or you want to have a time for advice, let's schedule a time and block that out for 30 minutes or however long you're willing to do it. Because in the real coaching um, session and a real coaching um, conversation, you won't leave drained. You will not leave emptied. You will not leave drained. You in fact will have a lot of energy because when you start working with the people that you were created to work with and that you enjoy working with and they enjoy working with you, 
you leave that session saying, I can do 20 of these today, <laughs> opposed to those other people that, you know, come to you, and I'm not trying to be wrong, but suck the life out of you. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. So create boundaries. If you're that go-to person, even if you're not a coach yet, or you, you know, if you're in coaching, we, we get you, to, you'll know this, you'll learn this, but outside of it, create those boundaries in your life for people. And that will help you. Absolutely. Thank hey, you. Doc. Yes, Mark. I just want to add something. Um, I mentioned that when I got this training, I just wanted better tools. I was working in that nonprofit sector, people coming out of incarceration. I was also part-time on staff at Church for the Nations and doing a lot of the pastoral counseling. And if there are two people that you don't charge, it's church, people coming out of incarceration and people that are in your congregation. So I spent a lot of time, I guess you could say, sharpening these skills or using these tools to serve people. And I wasn't being a paid coach. And so I just want to mention that you may be here and wanting to gain these skills, not for charging people or being a paid coach. Um, I, that changed for me uh, because it became such a passion and a desire uh, that I did officially launch my practice. But I just want to make sure you know that you can gain these tools just because you use them in a ministry setting or maybe in your work setting in a leadership role or whatever the case may be, um, that you know, you've got options and however it best suits what you want to become. I, I just can't say enough about how, how beneficial and how impactful it's been. All right, thank you, Mark. Yeah, we have coaches, some of our, some people that go through our coaching process never intend to become coaches, but they use it in their personal life they use it in their families. We have a number of people right here at CFTN who have gone through our coaching process and they've become leaders in our church. And they use the tools, not so much in a private practice role, but just using the tools in their workplace. Our, uh, our Haiti coach, and Felicia did all the training with our Haitian group. But uh, talk about a unique situation there. One of our coaches there never, never graduated from school, went through our coaching program, and the Felicia could speak to this a little better than I could, but got hired by the educational department of Haiti. T tell that story a little bit, Felicia. Yeah, guys, so he's phenomenal. Um, hope for one day him to be on here. And Haiti is going through such hard times right now, harder than ever, which is crazy. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers. But his name is Willie Wilgins. And um, I had the privilege of meeting him when I went there initially for an Elevate trip. And then I got to stay and teach Life Impact material um, and train him and four other of his staff um, to be coaches and now we've trained more, but he is such a phenomenal young man. Like he is so goal-driven, has, a, you know, identified any limiting beliefs, transferred beliefs. And so he's taught that all in his neighborhood to, I mean, he is just, I, I can't, I can't explain to you how amazing it is. Anyways, he's an incredible leader. He sought after, well, this, it's a college, it's called Haiti Tech. And it's one of the most prominent colleges in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, okay? And other than life impact, he doesn't have any college education. He doesn't have anything like that. This college sought after him, heard about him, heard about the workshops he was teaching, just literally teaching what he learned in life impact. Came to him, he has a, he's created a, a, an organization called Blessing Institute Haiti. He did this when he was 22 years old, you know? Um, now he's 28, but so they sought after him and said, hey, we want you to come work for our college. Like we will pay you this amount of money. He actually said, no, I'm doing my own thing. I don't want to work anybody else's hours. I don't want to do anything. They said, we will give you an office. You can do all your Blessing Institute stuff here. You know, like they sought after him. And now he's had opportunities to teach in the, you know, the government areas of education in Haiti, like all because of what he learned in Life Impact and specifically 
you know, the first six weeks are what transformed everything. And that's what he teaches a lot of the students, teachers, um, and now government officials. So it's pretty amazing. And once you go through Life Impact, we just tell you to take the material, make it your own and use it. We don't copyright this stuff. I, I just want it to be used. And that's what, that's what Willie's doing. And other people in other parts of the country um, are doing in other places. So it's, it's very exciting. Okay, someone put up a, I saw just a brief text to talk about when to refer. I'll give you just a quick thing on this. Counseling deals with issues. Issues are things like rape, abuse, uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. And sometimes people are stuck in that and they, they can't move forward. So they've got past issues. Now, if you can turn an issue into a goal, it's coachable. Some issues can't be turned into goals. So those are people that we refer. Uh, depression, anxiety uh, might be something that people are so bogged down with that they're not coachable. And we help you to, to recognize when people are not coachable. That's when you would want to refer them uh, to someone. And uh, maybe they have people in their own network. Uh, sometimes they're referred to me. Um, so that's, that's what we look at for knowing when to refer if people are not coachable, okay. If you have a question, you can unmute yourself and just ask and we'll, we'll try to uh, discern. Maybe we could just take off the uh, slides right now so I can see more faces. Okay, we got a lot of people on the call. So uh, there's a little button down there where you can raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself if you have a question or comment or feedback. Or a takeaway. Or a takeaway, yes. Okay. Is there anything else in the chats that we could address, please? I have a question. Yes. Um, I was reading something not too long ago and there was, um, they were talking about the possibility of coaches needing to have insurance. I'd never heard that before. Is that something that we need to look into? I don't carry insurance. If you do your job as a coach, you won't need insurance. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> because if, if we do our job as coaches, we're not making... We're not prescribing anything. We're not telling anybody what to do. We're not moving in any of those kind of directions. We're helping people discover themselves. Now, if you do need insurance, it's if you want it, it's it's very minimal. It's it's not expensive. Um, but I don't I don't think any of our coaches that I'm aware of, and we got some here on the call tonight. No, but um, Doc, just to speak to that, if you want, Wanda, you know, and any of our coaches that you can create a disclaimer form very quickly with your initial, when you have your intake of your client and just say, I am not diagnosing, you know, anything like that, like, and that's just a quick, you yeah. know, just that a can be part of your, part of your intake and, and part of what you share with people. Um, and you, another way to protect yourself is to create your own LLC. And that's easy to do. We'll, we, we'll teach you how to do that. And it's not expensive to do it yourself. Okay. I have Life Impact LLC. An LLC protects you and protects your assets. So yeah, that's, 
that's there's there's ways of of protecting yourself. Okay. And, Thank Good you. Question. Thank you, Wanda. Good question. Anybody else? All right, Felicia, you want to finish it up? All right, guys. So um, thank you for all being on the call. We love it when all of you guys show up. Some of you are new. Some of you we've seen before. Some of you guys are our coaches. So we will, um, we're just always happy to see you. Sorry, I see chats coming across. <laughs> oh, shiny. Hold on. Let me pay attention. <laughs> so um, we have our next coach certification coming up November 3rd. And if you're thinking of going through the certification, this is the best time to do it. One, right now is always the best time to do something. What is the quote that says, when's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago or right? And the other second time is right now. So <laughs> Um, so if you're thinking of doing it, do it, go into the new year and this year with the impact shift. That's what we call our six week self-leadership process It's called the impact shift. And so with our certification starting November 3rd, um, that's what we'll cover before taking the break for the holidays. And then in the beginning of the year is when we will hit transformational coach certification training hard, um, with our training. If you are, these are, these are like two different places that people are when they want to go through this is like one, you're already helping people. You're already in a scope with whether that's on your job, your kids, your church, your organization, your circle of friends and family, whatever it is. And you're hitting a ceiling with how much you can help. You know, if you've heard any of my story, I used to mentor inner city girls. These girls had a crazy past. I have a crazy past, but I mentored them for months and months and I knew I got to the point where I was just like, I have nothing else to offer. This was way before life impact, but I just knew I was like, well, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> and I won't take away from just loving and supporting people because I love them and supported them, but I couldn't give them tools. I didn't know. I didn't know about limiting beliefs. I didn't know how to transform limiting beliefs. I didn't know how to set goals. I didn't know how to do all these different things. And so if you're working with people and you're hitting that ceiling of like, man, I don't know what to do. This could be again, kids, family, whatever. This is a great training and a great training for yourself because you end up coaching yourself all the time. Um, but also if you're someone that just like people come to for advice or you know that you want to have a, a career in helping people, like, you know, you wanna help people reach their goals and their dreams and there's nothing like it because there really is nothing like it. <laughs> um, then this training would be for you. And it's more than likely the last time that Doc, who you guys just had the privilege of hearing and where he'll be still a majority of the training part of it. So he is still a set part of the training team. He's in it for most of it, does most of the training, but next year he more than likely won't be. Um, he'll still be doing a lot of the trainings post becoming a coach. Like we have advanced coaching, trauma coach certification. He'll probably create one about your brain. I'm guessing sometime soon, you know, so he's always creating new trainings for us coaches, you know, so we can keep learning and growing. So, um, with you guys, all, you all have the early registration discount price, um, which is 1599 and it's in four payments. It's extended payment plan. So you'll get a link along with that to register tomorrow, along with the replay, you'll all get the replay, but also you get just for you guys on the call, we'll get a free coaching session with doc one-on-one uh -oh. <laughs> -on -one, mono -y mono <laughs> and you'll get a free marketing coaching session with me after you complete the program. So that's what you get just for the people on this call. No one else gets that. Don't share that with anybody else. Okay. Um, so if you want to register, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, replying to any of the emails you've gotten, I will get them. And if you want to schedule a time to talk about it and see if the program's for you, let me know and we'll get that too, because we want you to be in it if it's right for you. And we know that you guys have a lot of the attributes, traits that we already talked about because you showed up on this call. And so you are committed to growing and learning. So no matter if that's us, or not, just keep seeking that out, get a course, get a mentor, get a coach, whatever that is. So we're here, we believe in you, we're rooting for you. And that's it. That's all I got.
All right. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. Yeah. So we're very excited about this this uh, this year's training and want you to be a part of it if that's what you feel in your heart to do. Uh, we, we don't twist arms. Um, we want people that want to be here. So uh, thank you again for being on the call tonight. And like Felicia said, if you have any questions, you can email her. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in November. All right. Good thank night. You. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Hey,